With version 3.4.0, Mokito now supports mocking static method calls. And with this short demo, I want to demonstrate how you can achieve this for your tests. So as an example, I will use this order service, which has one public method to create an order by a product name, an amount and a parent order ID. And when creating the order, we make use of two static method calls. So the first one is here, the UUID. So whenever we don't get past a parent order ID, we generate the order ID for ourselves. And the second one is here, local date time now. So we set the creation date to now. So whether or not this implementation here makes sense, doesn't matter as I want to use this class to demonstrate this new feature of Mokito. To now be able to mock static method calls with Mokito, we have to adjust our dependency. So the first thing we have to do is we have to increase the version of Mokito to a version greater than or equal 3.4.0. And if your project yet used only the Mokito core dependency, you have to replace it with Mokito inline. So if your project is using Spring Boot and you make use of the Spring Boot starter test, you can either override it by yourself by specifying here mokito.version inside the property section of your POM or you upgrade to a Spring Boot version uh, greater than or equals 2.4.0 and the second milestone. And as the Spring Boot starter test only includes Mokito core, you can simply place Mokito inline to your project and Spring Boot will manage the version for you. So with this in place, we can go back to our class and can now start writing our first test. So with our test, we now want to ensure that we properly set the order ID to a random UUID and want to use static mocking to ensure we have control over what this random UUID returns here. So therefore let's create the unit test. First thing we want to do, we want to instantiate the class under test. So therefore create an instance of the class we are going to test and then start with the first test. So this test will verify that we include a random order ID when no parent order exists. So what we want to do is we want to create a order using our order service. And let's say we want to create a MacBook Pro with amount of two and we don't pass here the parent order ID, hence our application logic should include a random UUID. To now mock this, we can make use of a new interface of Mokito, which is called mocked static. And here we can specify the class we want to mock, which is here UUID. To create it, we can use Mokito.mockStatic and pass UUID here. So if we take a look at mocked static here, this interface extends scoped mock. And here the Java doc reads that this creates a thread local mock, which the activator has to close. And as the scoped mock extends auto closable, we can use Java's try with resource statement. So we don't have to manually close it on our own. So here we can wrap it inside try and then have the mocked version inside this try block. And to now mock the behavior, we can access our mocked UUID and then can say when. And the method we want to mock is random UUID. So we can path it here and then use the well-known then return. And within here, we now have to specify a default UUID. So what we can't do here now, we can't say UUID from string here because inside this try block, it's already mocked. So we have to do it before outside this scope here. So I'll put it here at the field level of the class. So to always instantiate the same UUID. And then we can use this default UUID to now say whenever random UUID is called, we want to return our default UUID. And when calling here our class under test, we can then finally write an assertion and that our result, which is our order, um, has now this UUID as an ID field. And if we now run the test, we see now a successful test case, which indicates that we could now successfully mock our um, static method call to the UUID class to now see a visual representation where this UUID is mocked and where it's not. We can simply print out what random UUID brings us. So let's print it out three times here. And then again, two times after our try with resources block, 
And we should then see three times the same UUID. And after the try with resources block, as we close our static mock, we should then see again random UUIDs. And that's the case here. So we see three times the UUID with ending AC and then two different UUIDs. So this way you now saw where the UUID class is mocked and where its mocking scope ended. So that's why it's important to wrap it with try with resources. Otherwise you would always have this mocked behavior, which you might not always want in your test. And as a second test, we can also now add an example how we can mock the local date time dot now. So therefore I've added a test that we should include the current time when creating a new order. So similar to what we did with the UUID, we can now adjust this to make use of static mocking for the local date time class. So here we can name it mocked. And instead of passing here the UUID, we can say local date time. Same is true for here. And then inside here, whenever we call local date time dot now inside this scope of this try with resources block, we would then want to return a, a default local date time similar to the UUID. I will prepare here a default local date time, which we will always return. And then as a verification, we can check here the creation date and can then expect our local date time. So if we now run the test, we also see here a successful test case and let's run them all together. Both are green. So with this example, we now saw how we can mock static method calls. So if you find yourself mocking static method calls, I would always double check or rethink my implementation if there isn't a way to avoid static methods, to avoid the use of static methods inside my implementation. And to show you a way how we can refactor the order service, I prepared a class which would allow uh, normal mocking without mocking static method calls. So here I refactored the order service and our order service now takes two dependencies. So if your project makes use of a dependency injection framework like Spring or CDI, those will be passed to your instance and will get populated. So what you only would have to do inside your application, pr provide a clock which points to your local time during runtime and an order ID generator. And then when generating the order, we simply access a public method of our order ID generator. And for the local date time, as the now method is overloaded with a version where we can pass the clock, we then generate the local date time from this clock. And both the clock and the order ID generator, we can then mock when testing our order service and a test for this might look like the following. So instead of mock, statically mocking local date time and the UUID, we now use Mokito to mock the order ID generator and to mock the clock. And then when instantiating our order service, we simply pass the mocked version of the clock and of the order ID generator. And inside our test, we can then first specify the behavior of the order ID generator. So this is then the basic uh, stopping setup with Mokito. And for the clock, we can provide a fixed clock during our test, which will always return this local date time with the zone here of UTC. And once we prepare the setup for the clock and the order ID generator, we can then use our class under test, create the order, and then again, verify the outcome, but this time without mocking static method calls.